Hey there, baseball fans. It's Ben, and I'm back with my last stack of 1992 Donruss Series 2 uh, from this box here. So looking forward to seeing what uh, inserts we can pull, preferably one of those Elite Series things or an autograph, if my luck was really good. Uh, if, if, if not that, then at least some Diamond Kings would be awesome because the Diamond Kings are pretty cool in this set. So let's see what we pull out of these. Beautiful set. Honestly, I've had like hit or miss luck though with pulling anything good out of here in terms of just getting good cards. There's a Mike Messina though. So that's a good one to take. Uh, probably, I don't think technically a rookie card for him, but uh, definitely after his first year play in the bigs. And if you notice, there are no puzzles in this one because, oh, look at that Diamond King, Dwight Gooden. Nice looking Diamond King. I've noticed the Diamond Kings tend to be on top too. I don't know if that's a, an actual trend or not, but um, what I was saying about those puzzle pieces is this is the first series where they contractually were not obligated to put anything else in the package. So series one has a puzzle. I think it's a Rod Carew puzzle. Ozzy Smith. And series two has nothing, just the cards. I know I got a lot of puzzle fans out there, but... Um, I find it a welcome change, to be honest with you. I don't really, I never really find much value in the puzzles. There's a nice Frank Thomas. Good looking card there. Frank Edward Thomas. Chuck Malblock, who at the time was uh, kind of a big deal. I think they had, Score had some Chuck Knobloch. There's a Tom Gladden, I've gotten a few of these. Score at the time had a Chuck Knobloch autograph promotion going. And Tony Gwynn. So those are all cards that I've gotten quite a few of. I guess that's the problem with breaking these into series is that there are a total of 330 or 40 cards in this series. So you start to get a lot of duplicates if you open a number of packs when they could just do it all as one giant set and you'd have possibility of getting any card in there. But I do know my boy Sean Dunstan is in this series, so maybe we'll get lucky enough to pull one of his out of here. If I'm recalling this card correctly, it's a picture of him running the base pass in full exertion. Truly an action shot. So keep an eye out for that one. Mickey. You know what? Whatever happened to Mickey Morandini, by the way? Let's let's take a look at him after the fact here. And we'll find out. You know, having spent about 15 years living in the Philadelphia area, I was a Phillies fan for most of the, for that time, and he definitely is an important Philly player at the time. Uh, Jeff Bagwell, Rookie of the Year card. That's nice. Jim Tomey, Rookie card. Another really nice one to get. I've gotten this one already, but um, you know, one of the nicer cards in this series and in this set. It's a good way to start off that pack despite the fact that I'm flipping cards all over the place. A nice shot of Terry Leach is a really good perspective shot with the ball right in the middle there. Nice. Nice work, Donruss Photography team. These cards are in just great shape too, due to the uh, tamper-proof foil packaging as opposed to the wax. I know I am a wax packs guy, but there is uh, pluses and minuses to the wax, certainly. The pluses of pretty much only being the, the nostalgia. All right, just a couple more packs. Let's Hope we get some kind of fancy insert. No, nope, not this one. Will Clark, all star card. Geronimo Pena leaping over Tom Hur there on the Mets. Pack. 
Actually, I think I got a couple over there that I pulled out for some reason, so maybe I can grab those. Well, Pascal Perez, it's interesting windup. Vince Mullins, Bobby Bonilla again, All Star. Getting a lot of duplicates. There's a Jose Canseco. A lot of duplicates. So I know there are more cards than just the ones we're seeing in this set. Um, oh, look at this! I've got a few more, three more packs that I just realized I pulled out, had pulled out of the box before. So couple more chances. There's still life left in possibly getting something interesting or fantastic here. Ozzy Smith All-Star. Come on, Elite. Ron Darling, Steve Sachs, skipping through the field. It's Sutcliffe. Tony Gwynn All-Star again. Again, lots of duplicates. Skeeter Barnes. Good name. Uh, another Tony Gwynn. All the Tony Gwynns you can handle. All right. So, no elite or insert. Uh, handful of uh, decent cards, but a lot of duplicates. And then we have a the Dwight Gooden Diamond King here. Let's just put that up here. It's probably the best looking card in the bunch. They just did such a good job with the design of these, like really maximizing the art and then adding some flair with the gold foil stamping. So good job on these Diamond, Diamond King inserts here. And then we got Mickey Morandini trying to double play on Don Slot there. Mickey Morandini, there we are. Nineteen ninety five All Star team played on the ninety three National Championship team for the Phillies, losing the World Series to the uh, Blue Jays that year. Second baseman hit two sixty eight lifetime, thirty two home runs, three hundred fifty one RBIs. Played for the Phillies, Cubs, Phillies, and Blue Jays. All Star ninety five. Played in the Olympic Games a couple times. Olympic Games with a gold medal in eighty eight. World Cup. Silver medal and Intercontinental Cup silver medal. Grew up outside of Pittsburgh. Played Cape Cod for the Yarmouth Dennis Red Sox, not too far from here, where I live. Played for the U.S. national team, Summer Olympics. Went to Indiana University, there you go, in the Midwest. Major League career. Played for the Phillies for eight years. Uh, there it is. 1992. Against the Pittsburgh Pirates, September 20th, turned an unassisted triple play. In the sixth inning, Morandini caught a line drive off Jeff King, touched second base to put out Andy Van Slyke, and tagged out Barry Bonds coming from first base. It was the first unassisted triple play since 1968 and the first in the National League since 1927. All the previous triple plays have been by first baseman, so he's the first uh, second baseman to do it. So that's probably his biggest claim to fame, to be honest with you. Um, jumped with the Cubs last season, retirement. See what he did after. This is always the most interesting part to me is what happens afterwards. So he went to Chesterton, Indiana, opened a stationary business with his family, and was the head baseball coach at Valparaiso High School, and then became manager of the Williamsport, Williamsport Crosscutters, Philly's single A team, and then became the uh, Lakewood Blue Claws manager. 
and then became the first base coach for the Phillies in 2015. And then became an off-field role as the club ambassador. And he and his wife, Peggy, have three boys, three kids. So uh, certainly a baseball life, but also that stationary business is an interesting one in there for you. So Mickey Moore and Didi, a man of many pursuits, uh, you know, and also will be known for that as unassisted triple play. So good for you, Mickey Moore and Didi. Hats off to you for your place in baseball history. The rest of you, we'll see you next time.